This week on Live Action News Now, a pro-choice man says this. It's important that we are not just allies, but accomplices in this fight for reproductive justice. Plus, the Supreme Court punts the Idaho Emergency Room abortion case back to a lower court. And finally, she was left at a fire station 18 years ago. Fast forward to now, and she's crushing life. Live Action Nation, let's go. Hello and welcome to Live Action News Now. I'm your host, Juan Garcia. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any updates. The abortion rights movement has unexpected new allies, young men. They went door to door to encourage Florida voters to add abortion rights to their constitution. It's important that we are not just allies, but accomplices in this fight for reproductive justice. Okay, there's too many flags on this play. First of all, accomplices to what? Oh yeah, that's right. The killing of an innocent preborn baby, gotcha. You know, I was honestly waiting for the punchline from the Wall Street Journal reporter following this story, but it never came. So let me get this straight. A group of young men, men for choice, not necessarily seeking to care for or provide for women, but obfuscate their responsibility and duty are teaming up like some sort of testosterone laced progressive Avengers and going door to door to rally support so they can continue to be unable to abandon women and children and the pro-abortion media gives them their blessing. Sounds like a comedy sketch in the making. Women need the right to abortion because men deserve it. I deserve a woman's right to abortion. I deserve a woman's right to abortion. I deserve a woman's right to abortion. Abortion is not really about what women want, and it never has been. Abortion is about men, pro-choice men. So ladies, thanks for marching. Because you're not really marching for yourselves. You're marching for us. The link to that video can be found in the description below, but the fact is that the group actually says that they want to activate men who have, quote, something to lose. This is dangerous to women, potentially, because we already have plenty of men who know good and well they have something to lose and are already pressuring women to abort, sometimes under the threat of their lives. Here's the deal. If a man is not ready to commit to a woman in marriage, that man is not ready for sex. End of story. Men who engage in sex outside of marriage make a promise to love a woman with their body when in reality he's only using her, an act that could put a child at risk of a broken home, force another woman to be a single mom, or even worse, risk the death of an innocent baby. Unfortunately, the CDC has already forecasted this kind of behavior with a recent study that said 9 out of 10 women who aborted were unwed. What's even worse is that approximately 6 out of the 10 women already had a child. It's time for men to stand up and stop this foolishness. Now this. After a brief leak of the decision documents, the Supreme Court of the United States formally issued its guidance in the Moyle versus United States and Idaho versus United States cases by choosing to return them to a lower court. This means Idaho hospitals receiving Medicaid funding must allow abortions to be committed as, quote, stabilizing care in compliance with the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. However, the Idaho Family Policy Council stated after news of the leak, because medical emergency exceptions have proven just as effective as life of the mother exceptions in restricting access to elective abortions, we do not anticipate the abortion rate in Idaho will increase as a result of the ruling. In short, as we've said many times before in this program, emergency care to save a mother and or miscarriage management and ectopic pregnancy removal is legal in every state. Now, while those procedures I just mentioned may lead to the unintended death of a preborn child, as Live Action founder and president Lila Rose noted in a press release, this is fundamentally different from abortion, the direct intentional killing of an innocent human being in the womb. Big Abortion and its supporters are committed to financially assisting women to kill their preborn babies with violent abortion rather than helping women to carry to term. And this has been exacerbated since the fall of Roe when the Dobbs decision allowed the states to determine abortion laws. Data has shown that since Dobbs, profitable abortion industry representatives are morphing into abortion travel agents to enrich their own pockets and lure women from states that protect preborn children to states that do not. Here's what my bestie Carol found. According to the latest data published by the Guttmacher Institute in May of 2024, over 170,000 patients traveled out of state in 2023 to seek abortion care. The precise abortion travel figure was 171,300 people, according to the USA Today. The number represents nearly 17% of total abortions, a million 37,000 reported in 2023, and is an increase from the abortion travel numbers just a few years prior. Unlike for-profit abortion facilities, pro-life pregnancy help centers offer free help to pregnant women. See the difference? Moving on, the Iowa Supreme Court ruled to uphold the state's law protecting preborn children from being killed by abortion after about six weeks gestation or four weeks post-fertilization, when a prenatal heartbeat can be detected. 
Previously, babies were legally allowed to be killed up to 22 weeks gestation in the state. A preborn child's heart begins to beat by around day 22 after fertilization, even before it has formed four chambers. Iowa was the 13th state to pass such a law. However, Planned Parenthood of the Heartland and other pro-abortion groups filed a lawsuit to stop it. I got a question for you. Can the inability to kill children in the womb really be responsible for an increase in infant deaths outside the womb? How does this even make sense? A new study published in the Journal of American Medical Association attempts to connect an increase in Texas's total number of infant mortalities in 2022 to its implementation of SB8, also known as the Texas Heartbeat Act, in 2021. But this study claiming Texas's pro-life law caused more infant deaths is meant to mislead and has been completely debunked by our team. You can check the full article on our website at liveactionnews.org. But here's the bottom line. According to the study, there were 255 more infant deaths in Texas in 2022. However, the study fails to note that this number is dwarfed by the state's increase in births during the same period. Overall, the mortality rate, given all these additional births, did not change from the prior years. This is an extremely misleading study. Additionally, the abortion-friendly media outlets reporting on this study have suggested that it would have been better that these children have been homicide victims subjected to violent abortion procedures rather than be permitted to experience natural deaths after birth. And finally, a baby girl was dropped off at a fire station in Claremont, Florida 18 years ago as part of the state's safe haven program aimed at saving the lives of newborn babies at risk of abandonment. The program allows parents to anonymously bring infants under a certain age to specific safe locations, rather than abandon them when they feel unable to parent. Baby Colleen just graduated from high school and was honored by the fire station on Facebook. Check that out. Now there's a version of the safe haven law in every state. And since its launch more than 20 years ago, Florida safe haven for newborns has reportedly saved more than 400 babies. Way to go, Colleen. For the latest in pro-life news, visit our website at liveactionnews.org and follow us on Live Action News on social media. That does it for today's show. I'm Juan Garcia. Thanks for watching Live Action News Now. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss any updates. Till next time, keep fighting for life.